Mary Mead and welcome. Welcome to the realms of mysticism, the occult, and magic, where your possibilities are only limited by your imagination. Welcome to the Witch's Cauldron and discover the knowledge you seek. Gather round the cauldron and even stay for a spell. Brightest blessings to you. Merry Mead and welcome to the Witch's Cauldron. My name's Paula. Today I'm going to tackle a very controversial um, goddess or deity uh, for those of you who are Wiccan or follow a neo-pagan path. Ostara, when I'm recording this, is right around the corner. And usually um, one of the goddesses uh, honored at Ostara in the Wiccan Wheel of the Year is the goddess Ostara Yostra, um, which is the Northumbrian or Old English, sometimes referred to um, West Germanic, Old High German Spring Goddess, okay? And she is the namesake of Easter in some languages and some traditions. Her designation as a deity or goddess is extremely controversial. And here is why. There was an 8th century work um, called The Reckoning of Time that during the equivalent month of April, pagan Anglo-Saxons held feast in Usra's honor um, and that this tradition had died out by his time and was replaced by the Christian version called the Paschal Month, um, which was the celebration of the resurrection of Jesus. Here's where a lot of controversy comes out. In the 19th century, there was a scholar by the name of Jacob Grimm and other scholars who tried to trace the origins of this particular deity. Um, through this research, they were hard pressed to find actual documentation relating to a goddess called Yusra or Ostara in the works that they had access to other than this one work called The Reckoning of Time. Then in the 1800s became the association of Ostara and the hair at Easter, um, where about mid-1800s, 1858, there were found um, records of Easter customs, and the legend was that Ostara turned a bird into a hair, um, and that is why the Easter bunny brings Easter eggs at Easter. So, and that's kind of really homogenizing the mythology down a lot. There's more to it than that, but I just want to make it kind of as simple as I can because I don't want this to ramble on too awful long. Um, but there's still, there was still the thought that the goddess was, the goddess Dostar was never really a deity. She was a creation of this uh, writer, or Beda, uh, B-E-D-E, who wrote the book, The Reckoning of Time. She is venerated in some forms of Germanic neo-paganism. And I'm saying that neo being, you know, new paganism, rather than being actually tied to 
mythology like some of the other, you know, Nordic, Scandinavian, Germanic deities that a lot of people have heard of, like Odin and Thor and some of the others. Um, so there, this is one of the more controversial deities that I'm going to do in this series because there's still a lot of there's still a lot of debate in scholarly realms whether or not Ostara or Estra actually existed as a pagan early pagan deity okay there were records that were discovered in 1958 and they linked the goddess's name to a variety of Germanic names and a series of um, location names in England. And they, they found over 150 inscriptions from the second century CE referring to and I will put the term right here because there's no way I can pronounce it and I'm not even going to try and they connected the deity the goddess Ostara to this um, reference is she ancient or not should you include her as a deity or not it's up to you whether or not you recognize Ostara as a deity Okay, I'm not going to debate whether I think she should be recognized as a deity or not. It, it depends on your perspective and your path. If you are a neo-pagan and or a neo-wiccan and you recognized Ostara as a deity, fine, good and well. If you're a traditional heathen or practice, you know, traditional Germanic practices, you may not consider Ostara to be a deity because of the lack of actual definitive scholarly works pinning her or naming her as a spring deity. But if you do recognize Ostara as a spring deity, I'm going to break down her correspondences for you. Typically, Ostara is worked with at the Wiccan holiday of Ostara, the spring equinox. And if you remember, an equinox is when there is an equal amount of night and an equal amount of daylight hours. What does Ostara, what are her correspondences, and what intentions can you work with at Ostara with her? She is the goddess of spring and renewal. She is typically recognized as an Anglo-Saxon deity. Now, I will tell you, in one of my go-to books where I research deities as my starting point, she's not even in the Encyclopedia of Spirits. She's not even in here. Uh, or if she is, I've never been able to find her. She is, however, in my Llewellyn Complete Book of Correspondences. So, she's designated as Anglo-Saxon. The celebration affiliated with her is, of course, Ostara. The season affiliated with her is Spring. The rune associated with her is Dag. Trees affiliated with Ostara are the Ash and the Linden. Herbs in garden are lilies. Animals are hares or rabbits. And the intents for her are beginnings, cycles, energy, fertility, growth, love, rebirth, and renewal. So it all depends on your perspective whether or not you consider Ostara or Estre to be a legitimate deity or not um, and if you make a comment on the video please keep everything 
you know, keep everything respectful in the comments section. I, I don't want everybody, you know, going at each other in the comments about whether a star is or is not a deity, you know, things with uh, her appearance in the popular series uh, American Gods has sparked this kind of debate again of whether she is uh, a goddess or not or whether she is a mo modern creation uh, by the neo-pagan or neo-wiccan movements so with that my friends merry we did meet merry we will part until we merry meet again be well and walk in love and light everybody bye